Combination Machine Maintenance. This picture is only to represent what our trucks could look like without proper maintenance. Combination Machine Definition. A sewer cleaning truck with high pressure water and vacuum systems. The practices explained in this program could apply to any piece of equipment. I will be using pictures of equipment I represent and pictures from other manufacturers to show common points of maintenance. My name is Kerry Alcott. This class has been broken into three separate videos to make viewing time shorter. Program Overview Video number one is about lubrication. Video number two is about daily maintenance. And video number three is about monthly maintenance component adjustment, and air systems. Daily maintenance. Daily body inspection. First, check the hydraulic oil level. Add as needed and don't overfill. If your system has two sight glasses, the proper level is half to three quarters of the lower glass. A common hydraulic oil to use is AW46. Viscosity of oil depends on the ambient and working temperatures, like a 32 for colder or a 68 for hotter. Don't use multi-purpose or universal hydraulic oils. They can hold too much heat and cause damage to hoses and seals. If your machine has an auxiliary engine, check the fluid levels. Engine oil level dipstick. If your machine is new, the Tier 4 engines use low ash engine oils only. Engine coolant level. Always check the radiator when cold, and don't trust that there's coolant in it because there's coolant in the overflow bottle. If there's a leak in the coolant system, then there's no vacuum to pull the coolant back into the radiator. The radiator could go dry and still have coolant in the overflow bottle. Water pump crankcase oil level. Triplex pumps have a crankshaft like an engine has. Most models have a dipstick or some sight glass to inspect the fluid levels. If the pump has brass parts, make sure you use an oil that has no EP additives. A brand of oil for triplex pumps is an equivalent to or use Mobile Gear 630. Any transfer case or split shaft PTO. Check the oil level sight glass or oil level plug. Never overfill a gear case. In some applications, you would have to go under the truck to check this fluid. And in some cases, where your standard operating procedures doesn't allow you to do that, report any fluid leaks found around the gear case or drips of oil on the ground. Depending on the type of transfer gear case, the oils could be a heavy gear oil or an automatic transmission fluid. Check the blower oil level. There are two oil level sight glasses on the rear or the input shaft side of the blower and one on the front case of the blower. The proper level is half to three quarters showing in the sight glass. The oil used is, or an equivalent to, Mobile's DTE Extra Heavy Oil. Check the vacuum relief valves for proper operation. Vacuum relief valves must operate correctly for the operator's safety. The relief is what reduces the suction from the end of the vacuum hose. An operator could get caught in the hose and the relief will allow the operator to pull themselves out. Before operating your combination truck, do a walk around and make sure that clean out doors are secure. that tubing and hoses are secure, all toolbox doors are closed, and boom securement devices are in place, hose reel returned to travel position, body and rear door is closed and locked.
Look for any loose items that can fall off the truck. Check the drive belt tension on any belt driven blower or water pumps. Adjust or have adjustments made if loose. A loose belt will slip under loads and take away performance. If a V-type belt slips, it will get hot and glaze and will not gain traction to the pulley. If a V-type belt slips, it will get hot and that heat will transfer through the shafts to the bearings and cause the bearing to fail. If the belt is a cog belt, a loose belt will cause a vibration that would loosen mounting hardware and could shorten the life of bearings. Hose reel drive chain needs to be kept adjusted. If the chain is too loose, the wraps of the rotter hose will loosen as you drive down the road. When stopping and starting the rotation of the hose reel, that play in the chain will slap against the teeth of the sprocket and break teeth or loosen the mountain hardware on the hydraulic motor. Adjust to a quarter inch of play. This will keep the hose wrapped tight on the reel and make other parts of the hose reel last longer. Look for hydraulic leaks around the motor. Inspect the rotter hose for damage. If a rotter hose is cut and the white woven cloth is showing, do not run the machine until you get the hose repaired. This is for the operator's safety. A burst of high pressure water could do personal injury. Daily body cleaning. Water filters. Most systems have two filters. Tank filter. Pump filter. Tank filter. Pump filter. One for filtering rust scale and sand coming from the hydrant into the water tanks. The second to catch anything that passes through the first one before the water pump. Screens need to be cleaned daily so not to slow the water entering the pump. This will cause a performance problem or could cause damage to the pump packings. Some systems need to prime the water pump of air so not to burn the packings. Water tank filters need to be kept clean. In some systems there are hydraulic oil coolers and these filters keep the debris from plugging the coolers. This screen is damaged from not cleaning. This is the tank screen from the hydrant. Rust scale plugged the filter and the pressure from the hydrant bent the screen. This is why it is a daily cleaning. The rust scale that was in the screen plugged the oil cooler. The water travels through the screen from the inside out, catching the debris on the inside of the screen. If the screen is not held tight in the housing, debris could get around the ends of the screen. To remove the screen, first close the water shutoff valve. Loosen lock nut and clamp bolt. Remove the clamp and the cap. Remove the filter and clean. The screens are made of stainless steel. They do not rust. There is a strap across one end. This is to aid you in removing the screen from the housing. There are on some trucks two sizes, but more common is the three inch. Rinse debris from the inside of the screen to clean. If the screen is bent or has holes, do not use it, replace it. After rinsing the debris out, Hold the filter up to light. If light is restricted, water will be restricted. This is due to calcium buildup. Filters are stainless steel and can be cleaned with any product that will dissolve calcium. LimeAway, CLR, or other brands. This screen was soaked in LimeAway for one hour. To show that the screen can be cleaned to open up the passages in the screen to allow the water to flow better. 
When putting the screen back together, inspect the cap and gaskets. If they are getting worn, replace them. There are two gaskets needed to seal the water in and to hold the screen tight in the housing. The outer housing gasket, inner screen gasket. It takes two gaskets to assure that the debris stays out of the water pump. The vacuum final filter or micro strainer should be inspected daily and cleaned as necessary. Never wash the strainer in the housing. Always remove and wash it on the ground. Clean out cyclone daily, shooting water up in as high as possible, rinsing until clean water comes back out. At the end of each day, Empty the debris body and clean. Make sure to clean the float balls and the screens. Plug screens will restrict airflow. Clean telescopic boom. This manufacturer lubes their boom tubes. Follow their recommendations for washout procedure. Cleaning the boom to remove debris that will get between the tubes of the telescopic boom. Place a restriction on the end of the vacuum hose. Start the blower and at the proper engine RPMs, close the relief valve to increase suction. Using your handgun, shoot water at the boom seal while extending and retracting the boom. Thank you for watching. The next video in this series of combination machine maintenance is monthly maintenance, component adjustments, and air system.